you're about to graduate as a chemical engineer. You've put in the years of work, slogged through long days and late nights of tutorials, mass balances, heat transfer, fluid dynamics, and you can't wait to see the back end of thermodynamics. You've got that degree and now you're ready to be let loose on the world. You want to have an impact. You have friends and peers that talk about impact, but unlike them who can only voice their concerns, you actually have the skill set and the tools to address them, to actually do something. Or maybe you're a bit more like me. You didn't get into chemical engineering because of activism or ideology. You did it because you love to design, you love to build and to see your ideas come to life. You want to be able to look at something and say that thing looks and operates the way it does because of the work that I did. And if it weren't for me, that thing would look totally different and be totally worse off. So what's the issue? Are you about to find out that you're still too young, too inexperienced, that you don't know enough just yet and that you'll likely have to wait a little? Yes, to some extent, but that's not my message. I am about to paint you a picture of the industry you are going into and the hurdles you will face along the way in trying to realize your aspirations. You see, you're going into a mature and structured industry. The industry is a conservative one. It doesn't like out-the-box thinking that may introduce risks. And rightly so, we're dealing with substances with the potential to harm people, animals and the environment at large. The cost of mistakes is something that I hope none of us ever have to experience. But what this does mean is that you will take up a position in a place with a very set way of working, and you are likely going to feel frustration. Chances are you are going to take up a position in one of three types of company. The first one is the obvious one, which is in operations. You may end up working for a company that operates equipment that produces the vital chemicals we need for our world to keep functioning the way it does. You're going to have the almost religious nature of safety drilled into you daily. You will hear about how much that company cares about energy efficiency and their environmental impact. And as soon as you want to implement a change that improves safety, energy efficiency, or likely both, you are going to hear about how there is no budget to implement what is actually needed, and you need to find non-capital solutions to the problem that you face. I mean, not every engineer can be allowed to have the flow meter that they're asking for, not unless it's impacting the bottom line, right? There will be money, but most often this is for the fancy projects that these companies can post on their websites to get some good PR. And while that project is on the go, there isn't a spare cent in the budget. You better just keep that utility plant of yours chugging along in the back of the factory. Companies that run operational installations are in the business of operating, not designing and building. When they decide to build a new plant, the technology that they use will come from a company that specializes in developing and implementing the technology that that operations company needs. Enter the next kind of company you may end up working at, the technology developer and licensor. The sounds sexy as hell because you can be at the cutting edge of the technologies that propel our world forward. These companies boast about their R&D expenditure and how their technologies are efficient, reliable and best in class. A lot of the time these companies have developed solutions years or decades ago and have established themselves as the go-to company for fixing the problems that their technology addresses. These companies have sales engineers, people who are technical but their primary focus is to move their company's product off the shelves. Before you buy their technology, they'll promise you the world, but once the paperwork has been signed, you'll find it extremely difficult if you're the person buying their technology to get anything that is not typically in their scope. Perhaps you want additional instrumentation or the option of adding another stream. The fact is these companies' time is worth more trying to make their next sale than it is trying to help you optimize your specific solution. If you work here, you will likely find that while your company does have hundreds or even thousands of references, you on your own don't have that experience and you'll likely end up driving the spreadsheet that an old engineer developed that is now the money maker. And when you're privy to the information in that spreadsheet, you will end up thinking, heck, I could do this on my own. But obviously you're not allowed to. And when you do bump into a customer whose problem is of technical interest to you, 
Just like the sales engineer, your priority should be thinking about the next sale and the engineering work that needs to go into that, not sinking hours into someone who has already paid up. Finally, we have the company that usually acts as the middleman between operators and technology companies, the engineering, procurement and construction company, or simply the EPC. The EPC is paid by the operator to interface with the technology licensor when new plants are being built. They have the stressful task of managing the expectations of the operator whilst integrating the tech company's solution. They are messed around in terms of scope, budget and schedule. Having never worked at an EPC myself, I don't want to hypothesize too much, but I have been on either sides of EPC companies and I can tell that there is the frustration of having to do the operator's bidding even though critical information such as the design basis of a project is not necessarily firm or accurate, whilst having very little control over the basis because it is a contractual document that is your holy text that determines what you do. At the same time, EPCs aren't given too much information from licenses for fear of being exposed to too much of that technology license's intellectual property and how they arrived at a certain solution. Timesheets are the name of the game. EPCs bill their operations clients, typically hourly, and you are going to spend some serious time accounting for every hour you spend on a project. Where in operations or in tech, you can usually get away with spending time investigating things that interest you and don't necessarily immediately add to the bottom line, the scope for creativity and investigation at an EPC will be challenging, given that another company has to pay for that time. So what's the solution? Give up on your hopes and dreams of saving the world? Hell no. You're kidding yourself if you think you're going to do that by not using plastic straws. You think that maybe you'll be more stimulated if you leave chemical engineering and do something like computer science like every other chemical engineer doubting their career choice on Reddit? You'd be a fool to think big software companies are any different. But you can be prepared and that's my message to you today. I may have sounded cynical, but I love my field. I think a healthy dose of cynicism is useful. It forces you to take off those rose-tinted glasses. If you think the companies you go to work for are any different from the very same companies that gave us things like the opioid epidemic, NOx emission scandals, or prosecution of those that whistleblow against the environmental impacts, boy are you in for a hard lesson. The bigwigs in charge of these companies preaching about sustainable futures will not be around for long before moving on to their next sweet high paying gig to give the exact same sermon. But you are just as foolish if you think the solution to it all is to burn it to the ground and start again. You will have the opportunity to play with some big toys that are not going to be available to you otherwise. You will have to master your own ego and emotions. You must learn humility and you must take pride in every single bit of work that you deliver, be it a drawing, be it an equipment list or be it an inspection report. I just want you to be prepared and know that if you are feeling frustration, know that you are not alone and you are not the first and you most certainly won't be the last. Now go change the world by being the best engineer you can possibly be. You've got this.